So this is a model of the, of the male reproductive system and we're gonna orient ourselves first. So we are looking at the front. Here you can actually see the penis, which is the most anterior uh, structure of the male reproductive system. And then I'm just gonna turn it around so now we're looking at the posterior view and most of the rectum has been removed here so that we can see the structures of the male reproductive system. So here you can see the, the anal canal though. So the anal canal is, is here. And then here we have a superior view, so we're inside the body cavity looking down, and here you can see the urinary bladder. It looks different here because this still has its fascia, its connective tissue on it, and here it's been removed so you can see the underlying muscular architecture. And here you can actually see the ureter coming into the urinary bladder. So we're going to come back to this internal view and this posterior view in a second. And then here you can see the inferior view where we're looking up and here you can see the ischial tuberosities of our coxa, of our hip bones. And then here we're going to look at some musculature as well. So, But we're going to go ahead and start with the penis. So we're going to start here with this frontal view, this anterior view, and here you can see the penis. And this most uh, distal part of the penis is called the glans penis, the glans penis. So you can see that here. This model um, has had its foreskin or prepuce removed, but you can see the remnants of that here. So here you can see the prepuce, the foreskin that in some males is, has been removed in a process called circumcision, which would normally cover the glands. And so here we have the, the scar tissue left over from the prepuce, and then here the penis. Here we also have the scrotum. We have some additional external anatomy in the male reproductive system in comparison to the female reproductive system. So here you have the, um, the scrotum. You can see the skin of the scrotum here. And hanging in, in the scrotum are several structures, including the testis and the, uh, the tube that's going to carry sperm from the testis into the body and then out through the penis called the vas deferens or ductus deferens and also the testicular artery and testicular vein. So we're going to get to that um, in a moment but let's go ahead and take a look at a sagittal view of our penis. So here you can see a sagittal view so we're looking at the midline structure and again here you can see the glans penis this sort of flared distal end of the, of the penis. Okay, this is the glans penis, and you can see a little bit of that prepuce as well. And then you'll notice that the glans penis here has this sort of purplish, this uh, purplish structure, this red and uh, red and blue speckled pattern. And this is actually an erectile tissue that can become engorged with blood during arousal. And this erectile tissue is called the corpus spongiosum the corpus spongiosum. And corpus means body and spongiosa means spongy. And sponges, when they suck up water, they get really big. And that's essentially where this name comes from. So here you can see the corpus spongiosum. And the distal end of that corpus spongiosum is the glands. And then the proximal end, you'll notice that the penis actually extends through the floor of the pelvic cavity, almost all the way to the anal canal, which is here. So there's a lot more of the penis um, internal to the body than what we can see just external to the body. So the corpus spongiosum extends all along the floor of the, um, of the pelvic cavity. And then this part of the penis then is called the bulb of the penis, the bulb of the penis. And it's the proximal part, the part that's in the body cavity of that corpus spongiosum tissue. And there's a single corpus spongiosum. It's a, it's a midline structure. And we're going to look at that in a moment as well. There are two paired bilateral, one on either side, that meet at the midline erectile tissues as well that forms a good portion of the penis. And you can see that here. And this is called the corpus cavernosum, singular, so we're talking about one. Or corpora cavernosa is the plural of that. And you can see that erectile tissue here. Again, you can see sort of that blue and red speckly pattern. And then there's this incomplete septum that forms this sort of square pattern which is where we sort of get that cavernosum from because it reminds us of these little caverns. And so here's an incomplete septum that would separate the two capora cavernosa. And this is another erectile tissue of the penis. Together, the capora cavernosa here in the proximal part and the bulb of the penis here forms what we call the root of the penis. So you can see the root of the penis is both of these erectile tissues, or all three, because there's two. I can only see one here. 
So to look at the inferior view, if you look at the inferior view to finish off sort of um, our penile, uh, important penile structures, there are two skeletal muscles that form the floor of the pelvis. The first one is this muscle here that's, that surrounds that bulb of the penis here. And remember that the bulb of the penis is also corpus spongiosum. So that's where this muscle gets its name and it's called the bulbospongiosis muscle because it surrounds the bulb of the penis and the bulb of the penis is made from corpus spongiosum tissue. So the bulbospongiosis muscle here. The second skeletal muscle that we can see that's important in the male reproductive system is this muscle here that attaches, goes from the ischial tuberosity here and extends and actually anchors to part of the capora cavernosa here. And so this is called the ischiocavernosis muscle the ischiocavernosis muscle, sometimes pronounced ischiocavernosis muscle. And it's named because it extends from the ischium, which is that uh, posterior bone of the, of the hip, the coxa, and then extends up to that capora cavernosa here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you a sort of view of the penis if we're sort of looking at it head on, if we've cut it, cut it off. And you can sort of see it looks a little bit like a funny worm. I recognize that. But here you can actually see that single midline corpus spongiosum muscle, or I'm sorry, corpus spongiosum uh, tissue, erectile tissue. And then the two paired bilateral, one on either side, capora cavernosa. And these uh, little sticks are just there to hold it in place in the model. So those don't really exist. And running through that corpus spongiosum, you can see, is a duct called the urethra. This is how the single pathway for both sperm and semen, but also for, the, um, for urine. So you can see the urethra passing through that corpus spongiosum. So here again, you can see now, here's where that penis would be. So we've just taken that off. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the scrotum, the other external structure. Let's look at it a little bit more, more closely. So the first part here we want to talk about is this entire structure. We call that the spermatic cord. So the spermatic cord, here we've removed all of the skin and much of the fascia and connective tissue that would, that would hold and surround these structures. But you can see this again, that spermatic cord. And when we cut open that spermatic cord, what we can see here is if you look carefully, you can see blue lines, which represent testicular vein, and the testicular um, artery, which are these red lines. And then underneath all of that, and we'll see a couple of different views of it, is the small duct that extends up through there. So the testicular veins surround those testicular arteries and the veins, we call that the, what's known as the venous plexus, the venous plexus. And it's one of the methods by which we help thermoregulate our testis. So here's our testis. And sperm like to develop at a slightly lower temperature than what we would find in the pelvic cavity. So we put them outside the body, but sometimes the outside is colder or warmer than is ideal. And so we can actually thermoregulate specifically the testis. And one of those ways is this venous plexus, which enables us to cool the arterial blood coming from the pelvic cavity by what's known as countercurrent heat exchange. So hot heat from the hot arterial blood can be uh, transferred to the cooler venous blood headed back into the body from the testis. So those blue lines represent that venous plexus and they surround those testicular arteries. Here we have our testis where our sperm are born and then from our testis we go into this small comma shaped structure called the epididymis. So here's this epididymis. I think of the epididymis sort of like a nursery. So they're born here and they develop and mature here. And then from the epididymis, they're gonna exit the scrotum and go out through this vas deferens or ductus deferens through the spermatic cord, through a passageway through the inguinal ligament that marks the pelvic cavity from the leg area, from the, from the outside of the body. And then here you can see that continuation of that vas deferens. And then it would continue on. It actually is on this part, which we'll look at in just a moment. 
If we look at the other half of the model, so the models have been dissected somewhat differently, there's another important thermoregulatory process which has to do with muscle contraction. So you can see this sort of, it looks a little bit like a net that surrounds the scrotum. So all of this structure is contained within here. So this is a more superficial view where less has been removed from the structure. And this is called the cremaster muscle the cremaster muscle. The cremaster muscle is actually an extension of an abdominal muscle. So it's actually anchored up in the pelvic cavity and when this skeletal muscle contracts, you can see that what's gonna happen is it's gonna pull the scrotum closer to the body, helping retain heat. And if it uh, needs to lose a little heat, it, this muscle will relax and the scrotum will hang a little lower between the, uh, between the legs. So this is that cremaster muscle. You can see it here. So we have our venous plexus over here and our cremaster muscle, which is a skeletal muscle that helps thermoregulate and the venous plexus helps cool the arterial blood exiting the pelvic cavity. There is a third muscle called the dartus muscle that we can't see here. That helps wrinkle the skin of the scrotum to help also thermoregulate. So let's trace the pathway of, of sperm from our testis through our epididymis and then through our vas deferens, or ductus deferens, vas just means duct, up through here, it passes through what's known as the inguinal canal, and then you can see, now I'm looking at an, a superior view, I'm looking down, and you can see that ductus deferens, or vas deferens, coming out of the inguinal canal here, and then this is my urinary bladder, and you'll notice that the ductus deferens, or vas deferens, goes around behind the urinary bladder. So I'm just going to turn this around so we can actually follow that path a little bit better. So again, here we have our ductus deferens coming around behind the urinary bladder. Here you see the ureter that's carrying urine again from the kidneys <clears throat> to the urinary bladder. And here we have the, the, the ductus deferens. This small structure, there's several accessory structures of the male reproductive system that provide fluids that make semen. So most of what's in here now is a little bit of, of epididymal secretions and mostly sperm. But the amount of sperm that's actually in a seminal secretion is actually very, very small, less than 10%. So we need to add a whole bunch more fluid here. And a lot of that fluid comes from this gland. There's one on the other, there's two. So you can see this is what it would look like. And here you can see it's cut open. And these are what are known as seminal vesicles. Seminal vesicles. And they produce um, things like sugars that help the sperm, uh, provide the sperm with energy for swimming. So here we have the seminal vesicles. And there are two, one on either side. And then there's a single midline structure called the prostate gland. So now we're back on our sagittal view. And here again, you can see where that, that vas deferens was coming in and then meeting up with the seminal vesicles. So the seminal vesicles never hold sperm. So here's our sperm coming through here. We pick up some secretions from the seminal vesicles. And then we go through a small little duct called the ejaculatory duct, which is found in the prostate gland. So here we have our prostate gland. Here we see a sagittal view of that prostate gland. You can see just a little bit of that ejaculatory duct that carries both sperm as well as seminal vesicle secretions into the urethra. Now we call this part of the urethra the prostatic urethra because it's in the prostate gland. Here you can see the prostate gland. Here again is that urinary bladder. Here's the pubic symphysis. So, and here's the anal canal. So here we have our prostate gland and our prostatic urethra. And then as the urethra passes through the pelvic floor, we have a small part of it called the membranous urethra. And then it goes into the urethra that's in the corpus spongiosum. And we call that the spongy urethra. And you can see that here. And it exits the body through the glans penis. So we talk about the different parts of the urethra, the prostatic urethra, the membranous urethra, and then the spongy urethra. So from this view, here we have the other, the other half of the model, and here you can see the vas deferens, the ductus deferens, and they've cut it open here. Here you see the ureter coming into them, my urinary bladder, 
and then my seminal vesicles. And where my vas deferens and my seminal vesicles meet up, we come through the prostate gland and the ejaculatory duct into the prostatic urethra, the membranous urethra, and then the spongy urethra. If I put the rest of my penis on here, you can see the spongy urethra would exit. And then there is another small gland here called the bulbourethral gland. The bulbourethral gland is so named because this is the bulb of the penis and it secretes its uh, fluids into the urethra. So the bulbourethral gland here. So the seminal vesicles, the prostate gland, and the bulbourethral gland, there are two, one on either side, are the accessory structures of the male reproductive system.